Hi and welcome to another episode of Essential Lightroom. In this video tutorial I'm going to show you how you can recreate the effect that we have in front of us at the moment. And it's a very cinematic look. Certain colors are saturated while other colors have a more desaturated classic look. So I'm going to take you step by step through how to create this. As always there's a free preset that will get you exactly what you see in front of you. But stick around because I'm going to show you a few more tweaks that you won't get by using the preset. So here's the starting point, and as you can see, it already looks quite different to the effect that we're going to create. It's a great looking image, and there's a lot of real fine detail in there, and this particular preset works really well with that kind of detail. So the structure in the mountains, we've got the sort of rock line, all those things will really be pulled out. It also accentuates and works really well where we have the sky and the clouds with some real definition in there. So as always, let's go step by step through the entire process in the develop module and I'll show you how to recreate this preset. So to start off with, let's come over to the basics panel. Now remember, anything we do is based upon the image we're working with. So every preset is still going to require some tweaking and adjustment to make it look the best it can do with the image that you select. So inside the develop module and we're in the basics panel, and what I'm going to do is we're going to concentrate on reducing the highlights to start off with. So we're going to take those down just to make sure we bring out some of the definition in the clouds. So we're going to drop this down to about minus 30. Somewhere around there gives a good starting point. You can see we already start to bring back some of the definition that was being lost. With the shadows, we're going to open those up a little bit. So we're going to take those up. About plus 15 should work quite well with this image. As always, remember, you can come back in and tweak. Everything is non-destructive. Once we've done that, we're going to come to the whites and we're going to take those and we're going to drop those down a little bit. We want to sort of flatten out the white tones in this, this particular image. So about 30, 35, you can see we start to get a slightly flatter looking image, which will work well for that cinematic look. And we're going to take the black levels and we're going to boost those up to around right about 35 to 40, somewhere in that region. And you can see we now end up with a much flatter looking image, which is a great starting point. So now we're going to come down to the presence section and we're going to take the, the clarity slider because what this is going to do is it's going to enhance the edge contrast which will really bring out the definition and detail in the clouds, in the mountains, in the rocks. So let's take that, let's boost that up to about plus 35, plus 40, somewhere in those regions and you'll see the detail really starts to stand out, really starts to pop on the image. You can see there's a lot more detail, a lot more contrast between those highlights and dark areas to make those edges really pop. We're going to take the vibrance and we're going to drop that down because I want to take the warmer colors in the image and I want to just desaturate those a little bit. So let's take those down. About minus 30 is a good point. And on the saturation, we're going to take that down to about minus 5. So a very subtle tweak to the colors. There we go. So there's our starting point. So you can see we've now got a desaturated but highly contrasty image in there in the detail areas. Next thing, we're going to come up the tone curve and making sure that we're in the linear point curve mode. If you're not, as always, remember, you've got this little symbol in the corner. You can click that, switches it on and off and allows us to switch quickly between the two different modes to work with. Now we're in the point curve mode. We can now directly adjust the curve inside our image. So what I'm going to do for this is a couple of things. We're going to pin this bottom area so we can make sure now we can adjust the shadow area we can open those shadows up without affecting the rest of the image too heavily next thing we're going to do is add a couple more points up in the highlight area so we're going to click around there and around there this gives us all the scope now to get things moving so let's start off with the black parts of the area of the image so let's just bring those up quite a fair way and you'll see we start to get a nice look in the image, you start to bring back a little bit more contrast, but it's flattening those black areas down. So we get the contrast back in there without killing all the blacks. Next thing, we're just going to tweak the highlight area. We're going to pull that down ever so slightly to flatten the highlights down. Nothing too much, just a little bit of a tweak in there. Next thing, we're going to take the sort of the, this area and we're going to open those up a little bit. So you can see we've now got quite a subtle adjustment. There's before there's after. So we just look like we have a bit more contrast in there. So next up, let's move on to the split toning section. And this is where we're really going to start to influence the color of this image and bring in the tones that we want. So let's come down to split toning. 
expand that out now i want to add some warmth to this image so we're going to add some warmth to both the highlights and the shadows and they're going to be fairly close colors we're not going to use complementary colors we're going to use very very similar colors with a slight difference to allow us to control the amount of color and saturation in both the highlight and the shadows of the image so the first thing we're going to do let's add some color in there and i want to bring these into the sort of the orange range nothing too strong so they're going to be a kind of peachy color We've got a couple of ways we can do this. We can use the slider to bring the colors in and then use the saturation to control how much color is going to be used. Or we can use the little color chip and we can come in and easily select the color we want. So you can see as we select those colors and go through, we see the image being affected on screen based upon the amount of saturation that's being used. So you can see we can easily adjust that. We can bump it up and push more in there. And then we can control that with a balance between the highlights and the shadows, which we'll do in a moment. So I know that the color that I want to work with is a hue of around 47, which, like I say, is a sort of peachy kind of brown color. Next thing, I want to make sure that the saturation isn't going crazy. So we're going to take that to about 30, 31. And that's where we're going to be. I'll leave the balance for the moment. We'll adjust that in a second. So next up, we're going to come down to the shadow color. So this is going to be a little bit more on the red side. So for me, the color that I've picked out is 24, or around 24, so 23, that's fine. And the saturation, there's a little bit more saturation in this. We'll take this out to about 41, 40, 41, somewhere around there. And you can see we now start to get that warmth in there. So now I'm going to control the amount of mix between the highlights and the shadows. And we're going to take the balance and we're going to just push that over so the highlights become the stronger part of the image. So we'll take that out to around 42. And you can see that now balances things out. So we don't have any overpowering colors in there, but it gives us that warmth, that sort of retro cinematic feel. So let's take a look at before and after. So there's before we did a very cool image. Let's put that back on. And you can see that really brings out the warmth and the depth to it. Now, again, like I say, we could easily come in and adjust any of these, but you can see that we've got more definition now in these clouds. So let's move on to the next step, which is I want to come in and I'm going to come to the effects section. And I'm going to give this a post crop vignette. So it's going to bring this down. We're going to darken those edges off to really draw your eye into the image. And you can see it has the knock on effect that it makes the clouds look a little darker. So it brings back some of the definition that we were losing when we started making the tonal adjustments. If you find this is a little too much, we can back that off a little bit, get it exactly where we want. So we don't lose the definition down in the trees in the sort of this distant area. So that's looking pretty good. So the next thing I want to do is use the dehaze control. Now, even though the image isn't hazy, the dehaze can really bring back some contrast into the image. So let's take that. We're going to bump that up around 35 to 40, and you'll see that the image really starts to get a lot more defined. So that's looking pretty good. I don't want to go crazy. Again, look at the detail in the clouds. Let's do a before and after. There's where we were. There's after, so you can see it has a real sense of drama to the overall image. Now, we could leave it at this point, but if you want to create an even more cinematic look, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to the crop. I'm going to choose the crops option. I'm going to choose a different aspect ratio. So all I'm going to do is come up to where it says original. And you can see I've got a range of predefined different aspect ratio set up in there. Now, because we're dealing with a cinematic range, I'm going to come down and choose 16 by 9. Once I do that, you can see that allows me to choose a crop, which is much more cinematic in look. So we'll just click on done when we're happy with that. And that gives us that much greater cinematic effect. Everything looks like it's really dramatic, really widescreen, widescape. So there we are. That pretty much wraps the image up. So let's take a look at a before and after so we can see where we started and where we've ended up. So there we go. There's the before and after. And hopefully you can see there's quite a considerable difference there. I hope it's an effect you think is going to be useful and something you find you're using some of the photographs you've created. Don't forget you can download this free preset. It's available on the website and the link is in the description below. If you have any comments, questions or feedback on this video or anything else we cover on the channel, please pop those in the comment section. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel to be kept up to date with all of the new content we add every single week. Well, until next time, Take care.